Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Don't Call Me Skinny. You're going to notice it's a little different on this Monday podcast, and there is a reason why. Um, Sometimes I felt like, at least when I created Muscle Monday, that I had all of these things, all of these different things to talk about. Um, And sometimes I don't necessarily always have a Muscle Monday topic. Uh, Sometimes I get questions that will come in. Sometimes people you know, we'll say things on the internet that I'm like, oh, let's talk about this. But I'm going to leave Muscle Monday as a as needed or if it feels right for me to come in and talk about Muscle Monday. See, here is another prime example of just because I have Muscle Monday doesn't mean I have to do Muscle Monday. So I'm actually going to talk a little bit about something different today. It has nothing. There's no Muscle Monday. There's no intro. There's no nothing. It's just going to be me talking about this thing. The first thing I'm going to say, though, is obviously... Fat Loss Basics Group Coaching, we start October 21st. It is in full launch mode. So if you took advantage of the pre-sale pricing, great job. (laughs) If you did not, if you did not take a advantage of that, uh, there is still space. So I'm looking for, essentially I'm, 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 uh, I'm calling in 10 women. Um, I already have three spots filled. So calling in 10 women for that. So, um, seven spots to go at least at minimum. So You guys, this is going to be a little bit about what I'm talking about today, a little bit about what you're going to be learning about in Fat Loss Basics this round. Yes, you're going to get macros and you're going to have access to training. You're going to have all these things. But at a deeper level, we're going to have access to asking questions, getting to root causes of why do we start all the time and stop? Start all the time and stop. Are you tired of doing that? This is going to prevent that from happening because really, truly, at the end of the day, if you want to get to where you're going... You have to do it in a way that makes sense for you, that you don't feel like shit all the time, that you don't feel like you are so restricted or deprived of things that you love, not even just food, not even just food, but just life in general, and how to fit that into our life. And we are going to be really honing in on the food relationship piece because I am really passionate about this. Um, This has become kind of my, if you will, my bread and butter right now. This is like really where I'm focusing and really the people that I'm calling in right now aren't just looking to lose a bunch of weight. They're really truly desiring to heal parts of them and pieces of them prior to this that are not healed. That are that are the actual things that keep them stuck. Not the fact that they can't stay in a diet or stick to a protocol. It's literally the fact that they they, there's something deeper happening that they have to work through in order to get past that. So they don't have to stop. So they don't have to keep going back and forth and back and forth. Okay. So that is available. You can click the link in the show notes and you can just honestly click the link. And there's three different ways to pay. There's a paid in full, there's a two payment option, and then there is a weekly payment option. So all of those uh, are, are an option for you. (laughs) Options, options, options. Uh, pick whatever one is best for you. And then we get you uh, put into the group and onboarded and all the great things. So there's an intake you fill out and there's all this stuff. And I don't want to say that as an overwhelming, there's all this stuff to do. It's not like, oh, here's another additional thing. Okay. I try to make this, this as streamlined as possible, as simple as possible so that you can just get in and start getting working. Um, the cool thing is, is that the earlier you get in, you get access to all of my on-demand master classes and stuff. So even before we start working as a group, you can go ahead and start learning. Maybe you don't know anything about macros. I have a macros class master master class. Maybe you don't know anything about how to read a label. I have a label master class. Maybe you're really struggling with the scale and and letting it be the the holy grail of your progress. I have a master class about fat loss versus weight loss. Like there's so many things. Um, There's a strength training masterclass. Maybe you don't understand how to progressive overload. There's a two-part masterclass on that in there, okay? There's so many things in there to understand how to get from this piece to this piece that you can start working on and start changing. And this is what I'm going to talk about today on the podcast and why this piece is important. If you are a person, if you are a woman listening to this, and you have started and stopped diets multiple times, hi, that's me. My name is Sarah, and I am a chronic uh, your former yo-yo fad dieter. <laughs> I was like trying to think of the right word. I'm a recover. I'm in recovery. Um, and this was me. I chose all the fad diets, the slashing of the calories, uh, all of it, 
And I knew that it was just going to be the thing that I needed. And every single time I got, you know, sucked into something and I would start and then I would stop it. It was too much. It was too hard. It didn't fit into my life. Uh, I, the bottom line is I like food and I couldn't figure out how to eat food and, and lose weight. Like uh, that's the honest, got truth. I could not figure out how to eat, eat food and lose weight. Um, and that needs to be a, that needs to be email, how to eat food and lose weight. That's a good one. Um, so that was me. And as I went on my journey, I really started to notice, um, who I started becoming. And every other time that I tried to implement new things or change my life or whatnot, I never changed my thought processes. I never changed my beliefs. I never changed really at the root of who I was. It, I, I never changed that person. I wanted to change my weight and everything stay the same about me. And the problem with that and why it never worked is because you can't. You, you cannot change who you are. I'm sorry, you cannot change how you look without changing who you are. That's really what I wanted to say. You cannot change how you look without changing who you are. And some of you are going to be like, no, I don't think that's true. Like, I don't, I, I can, my personality will stay the same. I'm going to tell you right now, if you're truly changing your life, you will change on a very deep level. And part of why we backslide into old patterns, into old habits, is because that piece of us has not up-leveled yet. That piece of us that needs to be at that new level, it's not there. She hasn't arrived yet. Whether it's because it's a choice or we're not even aware that that is a requirement and needs to happen, it doesn't matter. What the, the point is, <laughs> is the fact that in order for you to implement and change these habits and for them to stick, for them to actually make sense, for them to become a part of who you are, because I always say it's not about it becomes about who you are, not something that you do. So in order for these habits to become pieces of who you are, you have to change who you are because you can't inquire and incorporate new habits at a level that you are not capable of handling, which means that you have to then up-level yourself to handle those new habits, those new things that you're, those new pieces that you're trying to have become a part of you. Hopefully this is making sense. In my brain, it makes a lot of sense. But I also am on the other side of this. I'm also over here. So I'm going to try to like break it down. Okay, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say for myself, this, I'm going to give you my own example. I started Weight Watchers about nine months after I had Jaden. So nine months postpartum. At the time, I weighed probably 193 pounds, give or take. I only know that because of Weight Watchers. <laughs> so I weighed around 193 pounds. I lost 30, 28 pounds, technically. I got down to 162 or 63 pounds, or 65 pounds, something like that, 165 pounds, I think is where I got to because it was just shy of 30 pounds. And once I stopped Weight Watchers and I got a job teaching and I threw myself back into the rungs of things. I actually was teaching two places. I was actually teaching, um, uh, well, before I started teaching, I had two jobs. I was teaching, I, I wasn't teaching. I was working at the SPED department for Anchorage Public Schools. And then I also was teaching voice lessons two nights a week plus Saturdays. And this left Jaden 90% of the time in a in-home daycare. Because at the time, my ex-husband worked shift work. So even when he was even when he was at home, a lot of the times he was sleeping. Now, I will say, typically, he would go to work um, maybe around 3 o'clock. So he did have her in the morning. But then he typically would drop her off. So anyways, neither here nor there. But that is a piece of the story. Because the amount of mom guilt that I felt for her, I never saw her. I worked all day and into the evening and I would get home at nine o'clock at night and she would go to bed and we would wake up and we'd do it all over again. And it was just, it was awful. It was terrible. It was no good for me. And so then after that, 
that summer, the last year that we were in Alaska, I transitioned into teaching and I was teaching in a classroom. And so my schedule changed. She only needed daytime care. She didn't need, you know, evening time, all the stuff. So that was great. Um, but everything changed in my life and I was not able to implement those habits that I had learned during Weight Watchers because really during Weight Watchers, I didn't learn anything besides how to restrict food. That's all that I actually learned from Weight Watchers. That's, that's it. It's the only thing I learned. So it didn't benefit me when my life changed. I didn't know how to take those. I didn't know how to restrict food at that time, partially because I was the same person that I had, I had been trying to live a life that I was unhappy in, trying to live in a world that sucked. Like I, I was, I was awful. I talk about this all the time. The fact that I used to literally eat a pound of Twizzlers a day, a pound, a whole pound of them. Guys, I wish that I, I, it's in, kind of embarrassing to say, like, I wish, I wish, <laughs> I wish that wasn't my story and I wish that wasn't who I was, but it is. And because I, because the, the reality is, is that Weight Watchers didn't teach me anything about how to manage my emotions, how to uh, regulate myself. Cause it wasn't about that. It was just about how much weight can I lose and how much can I keep it off? And did I get to my goal weight? And did you lose weight this week? And did you lose weight this week? And did you lose weight this week? And did you buy our fun little bars? And did you lose weight this week? And that's all Weight Watchers was. So when I went back to a more rigid lifestyle and I probably was severely under eating, working two jobs, probably barely eating what I should have been eating uh, to be fair. Like that's the reality. So, you know, that being said, when I went in with a little bit more, with a life, a little more flexibility, but still in a very unhappy marriage and, and I started eating Twizzlers a bag a day again, it took me right back to the same times that I would use food to cope before the same times that I would, you know, after school, eat a whole sleeve of Oreos and ice cream and chocolate milk and all sorts of shit because I didn't fucking know any better I didn't understand how this process works. I didn't understand calories and I didn't understand macros and I didn't understand anything. And because I'd never learned how to regulate myself, I never learned how to regulate my emotions. So I just went back to being the same person that I was because I actually never up leveled during Weight Watchers. I never up leveled. All I did was lose weight. As a person, I never grew. In fact, I would say I probably did the exact opposite of growth which is just bury myself even further into a shit storm because of me being so unhappy in a marriage. There were a lot of things that transpired that year. Ooh, even just thinking about it, <laughs> just thinking about it takes me back. It makes me kind of sick to my stomach. All the things that I had to deal with while working two jobs, while never seeing my daughter, what like the the amount of shit I was in it deep I was in it so deep but Weight Watchers never taught me how to move with life it never taught me how to maneuver through the hard pieces well you're just not allowed to eat that well you're just not supposed to do it well it doesn't fit in your point so you can't do that you're not allowed and that's what it taught me it didn't teach me that as I moved through that piece if I didn't grow that I wasn't going to be able to maintain anything that I had done because I didn't know anything different. So of course, I'm going to backslide into back habits. Of course, of course, I'm going to stop every day to the, we call it a shop at, um, some people call it a class six, whatever the fuck you want to call it. Um, on the military, it's like a gas station essentially, or like a convenience store. Um, I would every day, on my way to work, stop at the shop at, and I would buy Twizzlers. And I kid you not, I would eat the whole fucking bag in a day and I would do it so intermittently. It's not like I sat down and ate the whole bag, right? I didn't like sit in front of my desk at my desk and eat the whole bag. I would go there. I would open up the bag. I would eat a couple. I'd go to the office, make some copies, come back, eat a couple more. I'd have my first class. They would leave. I'd have five minutes, get everything ready. If I had time, eat a couple more. Like by the end of the day, that shit was gone. By the end of the day, that bag of that bag of Twizzlers was toast. And I was like, oh fuck. But guess what? I stopped every single day and got that bag of Twizzlers. Every single day. 
I never learned anything. I never up level. I never grew as a person. So why would I think that I wouldn't backslide into my same habits? Why would I think that I wouldn't backslide into the same patterns and routines that I had always fallen on? Because that's who I still was. I, I wasn't any different. I didn't change. I didn't grow. I just lost weight. That is why you are still stuck. That is why you keep stopping and starting. That is why every time you fucking put the weight back on after you lose it is because you keep, you don't change. Your growth doesn't go anywhere. You stay the same and then you fall back into the same patterns. This is not a dig. This is not a judgment. This is not a, what's your fucking problem? This is a, this is real. This is real. You have to be able to change who you are if you want this to stick. You are utilizing and using tools right now that probably do not serve who you actually want to be, but that's what you know, and that is what is keeping you safe right now, and that is what's keeping you sane, and that is what's keeping you your head on and from going crazy. So that's what you know. When you start learning how to regulate yourself, when you start learning how to change your food relationship, when you start learning how to change the relationship you have with yourself, that changes. And guess what? Those tools and habits and patterns and cycles that you always fell in, you don't need anymore because you have grown as a person. You are now up-leveling yourself to the, be the person that you want to be, to be the person that has these habits, to be the person that you want to show up for. That's the difference. So you don't have to backslide. You don't have to start over on Monday because you never stopped. Because that's not what you believe in anymore. That's not how this works anymore. Sorry, my phone is still on. It's it completely changing. You cannot change your habits without having changed. You will always fall back into the same patterns, fall back into the same routines if you are the same fucking person. To sit here and claim that I'm the same person today that I was nine years ago, I am not. I am not the same person that I was nine years ago. I do not people, ple- well, that's not, I'm a recovering people pleaser, meaning I am a lot more aware of when I people please and I'm a lot more conscious of it. And I also try very, very hard not to do something just because somebody else wants to do it. And I'm really trying to instill that same mentality to my daughter, who is also the same way who thinks that she has to say yes to everything so she doesn't hurt somebody's feelings. They are their feelings. That is for them to figure out. Is anybody caring about your feelings when you don't want to do something and how that makes you feel? Because if that's not the case, that's a problem, right? So I'm trying to model not being a people pleaser so that my daughter can understand like this is normal and this is acceptable and you don't have to say yes to everything. You do not have to be a doormat. I was a doormat. In my marriage, I was a doormat. I was a doormat. In some relationships with my siblings, doormat. And now, once I did not become a doormat anymore, once I stood up for myself, oh boy, oh boy. They don't like that, do they? They don't like it when you say no. They don't like it when you say you don't hold power over me anymore. That makes them spiral because guess what? That's how that that's how that person regulates. That person regulates by using you as a doormat because you just fucking say yes to everything. So, yeah. So I'm trying to instill that in my own kid, in all my kids actually, that we don't just say yes to say yes. We say yes when we want to do something, and no is a whole complete sentence. Just know. And you don't have to explain or justify. That was me. That was me. Guess what? I am not that person anymore. It doesn't mean it never happens, but it happens a lot fucking less than what it used to. I will not go out to lunch with people anymore just to go out to lunch. I will not hang out with people anymore just to hang out. And 
I am very much all about a cohesive relationship. It takes two. So if you're not putting in work and effort, well, fuck you then. I'm out. If you're going to have these patterns that continuously happen in your life, fuck you. I'm out. That is a different person than I was nine years ago. And a much different person than I was 15 years ago. 14 years ago, whatever. Way, way worse. I was way worse, you know, way back then. Nine years ago, I, I was better than I had been. But now, it's night and day. You cannot expect things to change without you being willing to change yourself. Like it, it, this is why you keep going backwards. This is why you continuously go back. Imagine waking up. <laughs> imagine waking up every single day and constantly serving yourself. What would that feel like? Where you say yes to yourself. Where you say, you don't have to do anything you don't want to today. Where you say, I am worth every bit of effort I'm putting into myself. And then nobody can take that from me. What would that feel like? What would that feel like? Because I guarantee you after these five weeks, you are going to change. You are not going to be the person that you were at the beginning of the five weeks. Come November 27th, you're going to be a very different person than you are October 21st. And that's just going to be the beginning of your up-leveling, of your growth, of your, I don't have to backslide anymore because I've learned something about myself. And I've learned something about what I want. And I've learned how to get what I want without having to give up all the other things that mean something in my life. So this is what I'm teaching at Fat Loss Basics, you guys. If you want to stop backsliding, if you're tired of star- stopping, starting, stopping, starting, stopping, this is for you. You need to join so that when it comes to November 27th, and we are in the midst of holiday everything, you are going to be able to put up that barrier and say, not today. Not because I can't, but because I don't want to. And it'll be a choice. And it being a choice is so powerful. So that's my, that's my muscle Monday podcast, <laughs> which has nothing to do with muscles. Eh, the brain muscle, that is a flex. It is a flex to be able to do that. It is a flex to be able to say no to people. It's a flex to be able to grow. It's a flex to stand in your power. It is a flex to change. And it is something that you can be really proud of yourself for and do a lot of great work over the next five weeks. Or you have the choice to stay where you're at. And that's okay. You are allowed to also choose that. There, I did a podcast on that a while ago, a couple of weeks ago, a couple of few weeks ago, three, four weeks. I don't even know. You, you get to choose to stay where you're at. That is a choice. Not one that I personally would recommend. <laughs> so click the link in the show notes. Can't wait to see you in Fat Loss Basics. Hope y'all have a great day.